before 2015, a 10 kilometer stretch of road in Western Sydney was a death trap. It was called Bryn Jelly Road, and statistics showed it was incredibly dangerous, with a fatality rate nearly two and a half times higher than the state average. Between 2004 and 2008 alone, this narrow two-lane road saw 130 crashes, killing three people and injuring 66 others. To fix it, engineers would have to build a $509 million mega road moving over 695,000 cubic meters of earth. But the most dangerous part of this build wasn't the 9,000 cars using the road every day. It was the invisible, high stakes, and potentially explosive web of services buried just centimeters beneath the surface. How do you completely rebuild a 10 kilometer road live while it's still pumping lifeblood to thousands of homes? This is the story of the Bryn Jelly Road upgrade the mega build that had to happen before an airport could even exist. For decades, Bryn Jelly Road was a quiet two-lane country road. It was the kind of road you'd see winding through farmland with crumbling pavement and few, if any, safety features. But the land around it was not staying quiet. This was the heart of Sydney's southwest growth area, one of the fastest growing regions in all of Australia. Thousands of new homes were planned and the population was set to explode by over 300,000 people. Then came the big one. The Australian government announced the new Western Sydney Airport. Suddenly, all eyes turned to this little country road because Bryn Jelly Road was the main east-west artery that would connect this new airport to the rest of Sydney. Engineers ran the numbers and the results were terrifying. The road was already struggling to carry between 6,000 and 9,500 cars every single day. With the new airport and the new suburbs, traffic was projected to explode by more than 300%. The road would fail. It would become a 10 kilometer long parking lot, choking the new airport before its first plane ever landed. The new road had to be built, and it had to be built first. But how do you build a 10 kilometer long road that is strong enough to handle an explosion in traffic? You don't just pave it. You engineer it. The plan wasn't just to add a few lanes, it was to completely replace the 10 kilometer road, turning it from a two-lane road into a four and six-lane divided highway. The first job was to reshape the entire 10 kilometer stretch of land. When you build a road, you can't have steep hills or deep dips. You have to flatten it. This process is called cut and fill. Engineers cut dirt from high spots and use it to fill low spots, trying to balance the earth. But Bryn Jelly Road was not balanced. To create a smooth 80 km per hour road, engineers had to dig out, or cut, 324,479 cubic meters of earth. But to build up the low-lying embankments, they needed 371,464 cubic meters of fill. This created a fill deficit of over 46,000 cubic meters. All of that extra dirt, tons and tons of it, had to be brought in by truck. In total, this project moved 695,943 cubic meters of earth. That is a truly massive number. Try to picture this. That is enough dirt and rock to fill 278 Olympic-sized swimming pools. All of this earth moving was just to create a flat platform. The next job was to build the road itself. And this isn't just a simple layer of black asphalt, the total area that needed to be paved was 310,000 square meters. That's the same as 43 professional soccer fields all laid end to end. To handle the weight of thousands of cars and heavy freight trucks, this road was built like an industrial sandwich. First, crews laid down a 300 millimeter thick base of select material. On top of that went the road's hidden secret, a 230 millimeter thick layer of lean mix concrete. That's 23 centimeters of solid concrete. This makes it a composite pavement. It's incredibly strong and rigid, designed to stop the road from bending or cracking under weight. Only then did they add the asphalt, a 135 millimeter layer for strength and a final smooth 50 millimeter layer on top for your tires. This heavy duty design is the definition of future proofing, but moving earth and paving fields was only half the battle. To truly solve the bottleneck, they had to conquer the road's most dangerous choke points, its creeks and its crossings. The old road had small, aging bridges. The new project would replace them all. 
This included building new bridges over the heritage-listed Upper Canal. But the biggest bridge job was at South Creek. To create a truly safe, divided road, you need to separate the traffic physically. So engineers didn't build one bridge. They built two brand new 38-meter long bridges side by side. One bridge carries the westbound lanes, the other carries the eastbound lanes. This massive concrete structure makes the head-on collisions that haunted the old road physically impossible. But the crown jewel of the entire 10-kilometer project is what they built at the northern road. This intersection was a major bottleneck. The plan wasn't just to add traffic lights. The plan was to get rid of the intersection entirely. They built what is called a grade-separated interchange. That's a fancy term for an underpass. It means the two main roads never cross each other. Instead, engineers built a massive new bridge for Bryn Jelly Road to drive on, and then dug a new channel for the northern road to pass underneath it. To build the bridge that Bryn Jelly Road sits on, engineers had to perform one of the most intense operations in civil engineering, a continuous concrete pour. They poured 2,600 cubic meters of concrete in a single non-stop operation. That means 260 concrete trucks had to arrive, one after the other, in perfect sequence, and pour their contents without any delays. If they had stopped for even a short time, the concrete would have set at different rates, creating a cold joint and weakening the entire structure. The entire bridge would have failed. This bridge is what's known as a voided slab post-tensioned bridge, meaning it has hollow spaces inside to make it lighter, while steel cables running through it are pulled incredibly tight to make it super strong. And this bridge is shockingly large. It is 57 meters wide. To give you an idea of that scale, the iconic Sydney Harbour Bridge is 45 meters wide. This suburban interchange bridge is wider than the Sydney Harbour Bridge. Why so wide? Because it's future-proofed. It's wide enough to hold the new lanes, the two meter wide shoulders, the three meter wide shared path, and the extra space in the middle to one day expand to six lanes. This structure is the ultimate solution to the traffic problem. But building it and the 10 kilometers of road leading to it meant engineers had to first solve a terrifying 10 kilometer long puzzle, one that was buried right under their feet. The real challenge, the part that gives project managers nightmares, was what they called the utility iceberg. The 10 kilometer stretch of road was already home to a complex, messy and aging web of underground services. It was like a bowl of spaghetti made of pipes and cables. And all of it was in the way. Before they could dig, the team had to find and move. Major water mains, including a huge Sydney water artery, high pressure and low pressure gas mains, overhead and underground electricity lines, and a tangled mess of telecommunications from old copper telephone lines to modern optical fiber for the NBN. You can't just dig. If your excavator hits that high pressure gas main, the entire site could explode. If you cut that optical fiber, you could knock out internet and phone service for thousands of people. So crews had to embark on a massive 10 kilometer long surgical operation. In stage one alone, they had to carefully relocate three kilometers of water pipes and install six kilometers of new stormwater drains. They found asbestos in old Telstra pits that had to be safely removed. The high pressure gas mains were so critical that in one section, engineers had to build a special concrete bridge over the pipe just to protect it from the weight of the new road above. And the hardest part? They had to do all of this without turning off the water the power or the internet for the residents and businesses along the road. This was the real mega build, a high stakes invisible project happening right under everyone's feet. This invisible war was happening while a very visible war was being fought with the traffic. The road didn't close. It was a live construction site with 6,000 to 9,500 cars trying to drive through it every day. This meant complex traffic staging where lanes would shift overnight. It meant 40 km per hour speed limits, endless orange cones, and constant delays for five years. As if that wasn't enough, there was one final delicate challenge. The new, wider road was cutting right through 28.2 hectares of the critically endangered Cumberland Plain woodland. This is one of the last remaining patches of this unique forest in the world. You can't just bulldoze it. So engineers and ecologists worked together on a three-step green solution. 
First, protect. Before any heavy machinery arrived, the team fenced off exclusion zones. These fences protected sensitive trees and animal habitats, creating a hard border that no bulldozer could cross. Second, relocate. Ecologists walked the entire site doing pre-clearing surveys. They were looking for native animals. They physically captured and relocated animals like the Cumberland Plain land snail, as well as frogs and turtles, moving them to safe new habitats away from the construction zone. Third, rebuild. The landscaping plan wasn't just about planting nice-looking grass. The contract required the builders to use native Cumberland Plain woodland species. They were, in effect, reskinning the new road embankments with the same forest they had impacted, helping the ecosystem to grow back. This three-part environmental plan was just one more layer of complexity on an already massive project. But what did all this effort, all this concrete and all this money actually buy? The $509 million price tag didn't just buy a wider road, it bought a smarter one. The project included 12 new sets of high-tech, signalized intersections to manage traffic flow. It also included 26 indented bus bays. These are the special pull-off lanes, so a bus can stop to pick up passengers without blocking an entire lane of 80 km per hour traffic. The traffic lights even have bus priority, meaning they can turn green when a bus approaches, keeping public transport on time. And for the first time, this road was built for people. A 3 meter wide 10 km long shared path was built, completely separated from the road, giving pedestrians and cyclists a safe way to travel the entire length of the corridor. The $509 million project was funded by both the Australian and New South Wales governments. Stage 1 kicked off in 2015 and finished in December 2018. Stage 2, which included the massive interchange, ran from mid-2017 and opened to traffic in December 2020. But for five years, the community had to live with the build. The main complaints were about construction noise and, of course, the traffic. Working in a live corridor meant 40 km per hour speed zones, endless orange cones and constant delays, which was a major headache for locals. From a dangerous two-lane country track to a 10 km six-lane ready artery, the Bryn Jelly Road upgrade is the new gateway to Western Sydney. It's an unseen half-billion-dollar feat of engineering that had to move an entire ecosystem of pipes, earth and animals, all to pave the way for an airport that wasn't even built yet. What other amazing infrastructure projects should we cover? Let us know in the comments. And if you love learning about mega builds, make sure to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell for more from Ultimate Mega Builds.